What are you doing out there? Hey, we're here. Okay. Uh, I've got a couple of uh, captions I put up on the upper right-hand corner. And what they are is just this page and this page. Okay. And you need to take a look at those and uh, uh, print them out or take your, if you don't have a printer, if you don't have a way to do all that, then uh, take a score sheet and just write it out. And uh, that way you have something to follow me with before you go on to watching this part of the video. Um, I had planned to do two or three of these at a time, but I think I better just do the first one. And the easiest one would be, of course, uh, like Jingle Bells, which everybody is familiar with. So what I'm going to do basically is just uh, uh, that you have to have this in front of you so you're able to follow it and then put it up on your piano and be able to play it after we're done here. Uh, or get it so you can play it and then follow along with, with the video. Either way. Okay, now the first thing we have to look at is the fact that this has one sharp. And of course that one sharp is F. Okay, and so uh, we also have to look at the fact that I see probably this is about the best place to look right here would be we have the F sharp and then we have the timing of 2-4. So in other words, instead of 4-4, four, four, it's 2-4. One and, two and. That's it. Okay, so uh, when we start, we have the chord G. So we... Okay, I just played up to just the top of the second page. Now we're going to go back to the beginning again. Now, if you want to add, in other words, you've got to start getting a rhythm. I've, I've showed you in step-by-step step over uh, 50 lessons so far, uh, uh, counting, timing, setting your chords, and like in this place, your G chord, and taking the D and flipping it down below. So you can play all your chords in one spot. G, C, A, G7, then this is too muddy, so we bring it up here, the G7, D7, excuse me, then back to G, then C, then A minor, then G, then D7, then G, and G. Now those all follow the same, so we're only going to be learning, we're playing G, C, A minor. Remember, A minor. The third is, is down, brought down one half tone, that's your A minor. And in this case, I'm throwing both the E and the C down here. Now if you listen to the sound of it, it sounds better this way. and then all you have to do between the C and the A minor is just one switch. So I'll we do it again. to the uh, chorus, which is Jingle Bells.
Okay, now that's the simple part of it. Now, if we want to add harmony to it, I'm going to show you how to do it. Then I may just slide up higher, just so we can get ourselves into even more harmony. Now, you notice how I'm playing a time. It's 244, but you notice it almost sounds like 444, 44 tune, because I'm, I'm, I'm putting a beat into it, see? See? Let's see. I don't even know what I did. Okay, I'm going four times, so I'm going one and two and three and four and. But I'm doing it with a rhythm, so we're actually doing that in eighth notes. Okay? Because if you've ever listened to Jingle Bells, it is not as fast as it would be if it was just a one and two and. But it could be played that way. But you would still have to do a double up on this here on your rhythm to come up with the same sound that they do when they play Jingle Bells. And that makes it easier for the person to sing it, along with you playing it. Okay, now what I'm doing is I'm playing the top note. I'm going to move up here so you can see it easier. Okay, I'm going to start over. Here's the G. Okay, now I'm going to add below. See what I'm doing? I'm right here with the E. From the A minor, or play it this way, A minor. slow now with adding harmony. Okay, we're going to go back to G again. Okay, and just one finger it. Okay, and the reason that is is because you can play, anybody should be able to play this if they've read their, if they know their notes that they're reading and they know the notes on the keyboard, they can play this. And it's going to take a little time, maybe for some people, but some people could just sight read. Now, when you get used to sight reading, for instance, we'll take the top line up there where we've got... Okay, you should already be here with your eyes. See, that's sight reading, okay? But if you wanted to continue to play all the time, you have to at least be here so that you never miss a beat. See? So here we go again. See, I'm already here. Okay, and 
I stumble a little bit because I'm trying, I'm thinking about what I need to tell you as I'm doing this and everything else and I goof up. Whereas if I was playing it like I wanted to. I'm just throwing it out of there. But the whole point of this is learn to play it the way it's written, okay? Pressure, we have start one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one two and three and four and After you get that down pat to where you're going, you noticed I was going one and two and three and four in because we want to play it at that speed. That's the speed they go. And since you've been working with a four by four with rhythm, all we have to do is look at the fact that this rhythm is actually going to be an eighth of a note playing. So we have. Just add in things. You could, you know, you could have a prelude coming into this. Discorded at the end because the snow's melting or whatever. <laughs> anyway, uh, but just how I'm playing it simply, you need to get used to that first. And get used to just sitting down and just boom and playing the, the, the rhythm. In other words, we need to get some kind of rhythm. When you get better, you can do it this way. with this again. OK. 
okay? I think I should stop there. Uh, so you see now why it's uh, too much to try and put more than one song in. So maybe in the middle of the week I'll do, the, I'll do another one. I think another one that'd be good will be uh, We Three Kings of Orient Art and uh, uh, Jingle Bells first. And uh, the reason I'm kind of having to do this is uh, with teaching, I'm able to use songs that are copyrighted as long as I'm using it in the process of teaching it. Um, and that's the only time that I'm able to use it. So I've got to be careful of what I do, but uh, as we all do as teachers or as we all do as artists and musicians, because if we're musicians, we have to make sure that uh, all copyrighted music, we get an okay and get a license to play those as cover songs. Just the same as if we write a song, somebody else wants to play that song, they've got to get a license also, so we get paid for our part, okay? They get paid for their part because they're doing it again, but we also get paid for our part for writing it and uh, producing it in the first place. So it's not much, but it all depends, so. But that's what we have to do. Now, I'm in the process of putting together a website where I'm going to have uh, emails. I will have a location where you can subscribe for a month. Uh, well, I think it'll be for a year. It's a lot easier that way. And I'm uh, probably going to do it for 1995. And that'll incorporate uh, being able to use and send things to my email where if you have a question or, for instance, like this, this Jingle Bells, I can send it to you, okay? Now, you're prescribing, and in that process of subscribing, I will go to the extra lever to do the other things, to communicate with you through the emails to help you in uh, getting to a place where you can professionally play, or just be yourself and playing, whatever you want to do. Anyway, so uh, I'm going to be also going back through the lessons and reforming them so that I can send out uh, items that I think will help you that I haven't been able to do yet, see? Uh, because we're not set up to where we can have a communication other than uh, just a comment type of a thing, where uh, uh, I can send something to you, Messenger, but not all of you have Messenger. But you all have emails, I know that, so at least that's how I used to work with it. And uh, it makes it so much simpler.